Okay, so just a really quick one here. Uh, it's the probability distribution graph. Uh, it's important that you know how to graph these probability distributions. Um, just refresh your memory um, here. Now this was where we were tossing three coins into the air and we ended up with a probability distribution that looked like this. 0, 1 8, 1, 3 8, 2, 3 8, 3, 1 8. Okay, so we'll just uh, replicate that here. Okay, so we can see that it's replicated here. Uh, the probability of getting zero tails is one eighth, one tail is three eighths, two is three eighths, and three is uh, one eighth. Now, it's important to be able to graph that. Now, on our x axis, we'll have the different values that x can take zero, one, two, and three. And on our y axis, we'll have the probability that, there should be a bracket there, the probability that x is equal to x. Um, and we'll choose a particular scale here because it makes the most sense. 1 8, 2 8, 3 8. So we're going up in eighths there. Now it's really just a, a column graph. So the probability of 0 happening was 1 8. The probability of 1 happening, 3 8. Probability of 2 happening, 3 8. And the probability of 3 happening, 1 eighth. Now, um, this, is, this is the graph, this is it, this is all we're really learning today. The other thing I'd probably get you to take note of is the basic shape of this graph. This happens a lot within the probability distributions that we'll be looking at. Not all of them, definitely not. But it will happen a lot that you'll end up with this bulge in the, in the middle here and then tapering off towards the outside. It's less likely for these uh, larger values or smaller values to happen than it is for these middle values to happen. Uh, that happens a lot. Okay, so basically all we've done here is learn how to graph this probability distribution graph, how to um, show this table in a graph.